On today's episode of EOS Tips. What on earth is a Ricardian contract? And why are they one of the key differentiating factors for EOS as compared to other blockchains like Ethereum? That is the question I would like to answer for you today. So I'm going to use the EOS toolkit once again, provided generously by Generios, ironically. So basically, the EOS constitution requires Ricardian contracts to be provided by developers. In the current version of the EOS constitution, if we look at article number seven here called open source, I'll highlight this. It says each member who makes available a smart contract on this blockchain shall be a developer. Each developer shall offer their smart contracts via a free and open source license. And each smart contract shall be documented with a Ricardian contract stating the intent of all the parties and naming the arbitration forum that will resolve disputes arising from that contract. So basically, when we deploy a smart contract on EOS, you also have to provide a Ricardian contract, which is the plain English version of the code, which clearly states the intent of the code's functions. So this is a fail safe in case the code responds in an unintended way that causes harm to a user, say in the form of lost funds. So this type of thing happens because computer programs are complex and thus we cannot possibly pre-calculate all the possible scenarios in which the code might run. So developers should test their code extensively, but there are still some circumstances that the code might find itself in that could not possibly be predicted. Therefore, we need a way to record a clear description of what the code was supposed to do so that when something goes wrong, we can do something about it. And then a Ricardian contract is that set of plain English statements that clearly describes what the code was intended to do. So let's look at an example of this. Let's take the EOS transfer function on the left hand side here. This is the most basic thing that we do on the EOS network is to transfer EOS tokens from one account to another. Now I'm using the EOS toolkit again here because next to each of the tools, it displays the contents of the Ricardian contract for each of the functions. So the contract is like, it's a template and it has various placeholders, which are demarcated by these words in curly brackets here. And this allows you to fill these things in based on specifics of the transaction. You don't actually fill them in, but they're placeholders so that when the tool does it, we fill them in by placing information in the various fields. So note that um, when I'm transferring EOS, the code, you might think is as simple as, you know, reduce account balance A and increase account balance B, but it's not as simple, of that, simple as that in the human world, is it? Not in the real world. So therefore the, the Ricardian contract says, I from whoever is the sender, so in this case, if I attach my scatter to this, like I do normally, I'll just attach my Chris JS Coney account to the EOS toolkit. Now, if I go in and out of the tool, the sender field is automatically filled in with my account name. So this would be replacing this part of the template. So it would be like, I, Chris JS Coney, certify the following to be true to the best of my knowledge. Number one, I certify that the quantity, which is whatever I put in here, the quantity of tokens, is not the proceeds of fraudulent or violent activities. Number two, I certify that to the best of my knowledge, to who it's going to, you know, who I'm sending it to, is not supporting the initiation of violence against others. So that's like, has someone threatened me and said, you send me all your EOS tokens or else, right? That would be a violation of this point two. Number three, I have disclosed any contractual terms and conditions with respect to the quantity of tokens to the receiving party, right? And we play, replace each of these placeholders with the real information. It says, I understand that fund funds transfers are not reversible after the transaction delay, which is a system feature, seconds or delays as configured by the from's permissions. So I might actually say, like PayPal, there's that feature that says pay upon delivery. 
So that might be a condition of the transaction I send to you. My, by default, it just goes straight away, but I might set a condition and I say, I'll send you the funds and you can't access them for seven days. So within that seven day period, I expect you to send me the product that I bought from you, whatever it is. And then it says, finally, if the action fails to be irreversible and confirmed after receiving the goods or services from the person I'm sending them to, I agree to either return the goods or services or resend the amount of quantity in a timely manner. So this covers many situations in which the transaction works perfectly from a technical point of view, but not from a human point of view, right? Say with that last statement, for example, if the payment transaction fails to be final, right? That's why it says irreversible. Say if that happens, um, I think because I have the goods, say you ship them to me and they've arrived, I think, well, the payment failed and I've got the goods and I think I can keep them. But that's not what the contract says and that's not what I agreed to at the time when I made the, the agreement. So I have to send the goods back or re-attempt the payment. If I don't, then this case could go to arbitration, which I would likely lose because I agreed to the terms of the Ricardian contract and there is proof of this on the EOS blockchain. And if I lose the arbitration case, then the ruling can be passed to the EOS block producers who can then forcibly move the funds from my account to the seller's account because until I've paid for the goods, they still legally belong to the seller. So I've either stolen the goods or I'm still at liberty to make the payment. So you can check out some of the other Ricardian contracts by clicking through the various tools here, but these are all EOS system contracts. That means contracts that are built into the foundational features of EOS, like transferring tokens, voting, creating accounts, etc. Basically, everything that is built on EOS is built on top of these basic functions. So as we saw in Article 7 of the Constitution, each new app that is deployed on EOS must follow this process of describing each function as a Ricardian contract just like a mini terms and conditions, so everyone knows where they stand in case of a dispute. So that's all I've got for you today. Please hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this, and share it with someone that you feel could derive value from it. If you've derived value from it, please reflect that by sending an EOS tip to my account, which is Chris J.S. Coney. Until next time, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.